Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video, Doves on the Fence. One day I looked out my kitchen window and five warning doves were lined up on the fence looking right back at me. They looked so comical, I grabbed my camera to get a photo. And this is my painting. I used wet and duet to start, and then added details dry, as well as taking paint off by blotting and using a paper towel. I hope you enjoy it, and give it a thumbs up. Now let's start painting. This is Doves on the Fence. One day I looked out my kitchen window onto my deck out back and I saw five morning doves lined up along the back fence and they were all looking right in the window at me. And they were so cute. I said, I'm gonna have to paint them. I began my painting with a drawing because I wanted to get the different positions correct. Each dove just looked a little different, and they were all showing their personalities so clearly. After I drew them, I began by painting the dove in entirely with water. And when it was semi-damp, I then began to touch in colors and let them spread out so they would look soft. Birds' feathers are very soft, and I wanted to begin with a soft approach to these beautiful little gentle birds. One looked curious, one looked quite pert, one was startled, one looked snooty, but they all had the one thing in common and that was these birds can have a beautiful rose coloring to their chest. They also have a lot of a gentle gray and some browns. For the gray, I used Payne's gray. For the rose, I was using alizarin pink, and I was also using some rose matter. And while the browns were still a little damp, I touched in with some deep indigo mixed with some burnt umber for the darker colors. I work generally from right to left because I'm a left-handed person. So I went to one bird and went to the one next to it next. I also used some yellow ochre on the bird. Bird number two was putting his neck up and looking right at me, almost like with an attitude of, what are you looking at? So I wanted to make him sort of flashy. After putting down the very soft colors of him, I went in with some darker colors. I have my photographic reference right next to me on my iPad, so I was looking at the colors. And I do enhance colors sometimes over what is there. It was the middle of winter, and these birds' coloring was very, very drab. So I did kick up the pinks and I kicked up the yellow ochres a little bit to make them look a little prettier. And the colors will be more accurate for springtime. Moving to bird number three. Painting in the water around and the edges and on the interior of the bird. Coming in with the soft colors this bird had a little more blue, so I mixed some ultramarine blue in with the Payne's gray in some spots. And you'll see me taking a color and working back to another bird 
if that bird that I just did looks like it needs it too. But at this point, I was trying to get the birds to be very soft in their coloring. And that was a major objective, to convey the colors and yet keep them very soft. I've moved on to the fourth bird now. And this is another morning dove who's sticking his neck out tall to make sure he gets a good look at whatever is looking outside of him. And the two birds who were doing just that were the funniest ones, in my opinion. They were quite absurd looking. Here I am surprised to see them, and they're looking just as surprised to see me. They gave me a laugh, and which is why I got my camera and took the picture. I take a lot of pleasure in how nature delights me. And I'm sure many of you do as well. Moving on to bird number five, a quiet little fellow. Again, my form formula was to color the interior of the bird and around the edges all wet with water, let it dry to the slightest degree so it wasn't just dripping wet, and then come and touch colors into it, let it spread around so that the colors would be nice and soft. after the colors have been basically put in where they belonged on the bird, along with the anatomical musculature, a little bit of shading. I then came in and put the markings while the paint was still just a little bit wet so that it would also appear to be soft on the markings. I left the beaks clear and I left the eyes clear and I will be going back to work on them more after those areas are more dry because I wanted to have some control over the paint and you don't have a lot of control with wet on wet. At this point I'm taking colors out And that's for the sake of shading. I'm adding where it's darker and I'm putting water down where I want to take some water or some color off and then blotting it with my paper towel. I'm detailing the heads of the birds and the edges and I'm working around the beak area. trying to get the colors right. I referenced some other photographs of morning doves as well as my own, just so I could get some more colors down that would be a little bit more interesting. Because in my photograph, the colors were very washed out and gray. The best part of my photo being the positions of the different birds and how they all varied in their personalities.
using a small brush to do the detailing around the eyes and the beak. And I'm using a little bit of patience. Look closely at a bird's eye and you'll see it's ringed with a different color, generally lighter. Their faces have certain details around the beaks and around the eyes, and I was trying to capture that for accuracy for their expressions. Since this is a very small artwork, I also had to make the little dot of brightness on their eye with a dot of opaque white paint because trying to leave it when I was painting it in was just too challenging for me, being so very small. But getting that light little prick point of light on their eye allows them to have their eye look like it's shining and alive. So I did that for each of the bird's eyes. Now it's funny for some people it would be so much easier to paint the straight lines of the fence. For me, that was more of a challenge. The birds had natural lines, organic nature lines, whereas this hard black metal fence had en black enamel lines. And trying to get them all straight, I really find it facilitates that process for me to turn the paper in different ways and I will be able to paint a straighter line. There were also areas in that black enameled fence that were shining with the light and the way the light was coming down. So I was painting very carefully around their feet to show the shining areas and the strongly shadowed areas because it made a very pretty effect and I thought it showed the surface well. It did take me a lot of time because straight edges are not my forte, but I got them well enough that I was satisfied. I felt the patterns were actually rather interesting. The strong darks against the strong whites. All along the fence. And now I'm coming back and detailing a little bit more sharply around the faces of the birds. And I'm using a very small, thin detailing brush. Using my small brush again, I'm enhancing some feather details around each bird. And trying to decide how far I want to take the details as opposed to presenting a general overall form. Uh, eventually, I settled somewhere in the middle. Now I'm going back to each one, bird by bird, finding the shadows that are underneath of them, finding the shadows in the birds, sharpening some areas, cleaning up my fence,
and enhancing the forms of the birds. Here I am putting in the little eye dot of light. And I have a little puddle of dark pink to detail around the beak some more, as well as around the eye and the eyeliner aspect of the bird's eyes. Many wild creatures, animals, birds, appear to almost have their eye done up with black eyeliner, which makes them very attractive and makes them stand out against their faces. And my students have all heard me use the term, okay, now I'll put the eyeliner on the creature. But it does present a beautiful contrasting form for them. So I'm also sharpening some of the markings and some of the feathers here. And sharpening around their little feet, their toes, their claws. I'm certainly no expert on bird feet. But using my observational skills from the photographs and as well as from other visuals that I've studied, that's how I learn how to, the feet go together and how many toes they have and all that. And the claws. Going sideways entirely to try to get those straight lines of the fence. If I was an ultra realistic painter, I'd be such I'd be so much more worried about it. But I'm not. And I will leave that to people who are far better at it than I. Now it's done, signed, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed my video, Doves on the Fence, and how I painted these cute, funny little birds. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you did. And ring the bell and you'll get notifications for future videos so you don't miss any. Below are links to products I use, as well as links to my Facebook art page, my blog, my products website store, uh, and other things as well. And I'll see you next video.